Even though I only had the SNES Classic Edition for about a week, I decided to go ahead and mod the system. In terms of difficulty, it's about as easy as a PSP, which itself is super easy. All the info in this video is from snesclassicmods.com. If you prefer reading through instructions rather than watching a video, then I recommend checking it out. The link is in the description below. In fact, even if you are following the video, click the link anyway because that site includes all the links to everything you need. The site also mentions that the modding tutorials apply to both the NES and SNES Classic from every region. I've read that the chances of breaking a Classic are pretty low, but the usual disclaimer of don't blame me if you brick it still applies. Today what we're going to do is add games to the SNES Classic. It's literally the easiest thing you can do with it, and it's probably what most people want to do first. The Classic has 512 megabytes of storage, with approximately half of it being free to use. Since Super Nintendo games are tiny, you can load this thing up pretty good. In case you're wondering, save states as well as save games remain intact. You'll see that I still have mine after the modding procedure. In terms of hardware, all you need is a PC, a Super Nintendo Classic, and also a micro USB cable which comes with the system to begin with. In terms of software, you just need one tool called HackG2CE. The link is in the description. It is a Windows program, but you can run it on a Mac if you set up a virtual machine. I won't cover that here, but the SNES Classic mod site has a tutorial if you need it. So first thing you want to do is download the software from the link and extract it to wherever you want on your computer. I set up a folder just for the occasion, and I also have a bunch of ROMs ready to go in another folder. Now open HackChi and select the proper console from the dropdown. As you can see, there are multiple regions of NES and SNES classics. In my case here, it's the um, NA SNES we want to select. Now click on kernel and then install slash repair. Just click yes to everything. Eventually, this window will come up telling you to connect the classic to the computer with a USB cable. But don't turn it on yet. Hold the reset button. Turn on the power switch while still holding the reset button. After a few seconds, you can release it. You'll probably hear a noise from the computer once it connects. Like as if you were just connecting a USB stick or something. The power light should stay off at this point. Things didn't go smoothly for me though. The first time, the program just didn't notice the classic, so I just hit X on the window after waiting for a while. Second time, it went a bit farther, where it says, please wait for the thing to reboot. It didn't reboot properly though. So I closed down the program, shut the console off, and tried it again for the third time. This time it worked no problem, and the software recognized the classic. Thankfully, this process only needs to be done once. Afterwards, all you need to do is start HackChi, connect the SNES Mini, and turn it on whenever you want to add games or do stuff with it. Now all you need to do is click the Add More Games button and select the ROMs you want to import. You can add box art by right-clicking and downloading the art, once you're done, uh, click Synchronize and the new games will be added to the SNES Classic. You'll notice that the new games will be in a separate folder. You can get rid of that by clicking Structure and then disabling Page slash Folders. I personally like having them separated just so I don't forget which games come with the system and which ones I added. That's the sort of thing I forget about, you know, six or seven years down the line. So yeah, that's not uh, all that hard. But depending on which games you decide to add and play, chances are that not all games are going to work well. The emulator inside the SNES Classic is called Canoe and isn't compatible or has some issues with some games. As an example, I'm going to use F1 Race of Champions 2, which doesn't work normally with the Classic. The good thing is that we can install other emulators on the SNES Classic to get around these issues. So this is how you do it. With HackChi open, the classic connected to your PC, and turned on, just go to Modules on the top menu and go to the Mod Store. Under RetroArch, you just select the newest version, which in this case is 1.7.4a, and click Download and Install Module. After that's all done, go over to the RetroArch cores, find the SNES 9X core and also the 2010 core, and download and install those as well. I tried just using either one, but it didn't work when I tried it, but installing both did work for me. Now with all that done, we need to tell the thing which games should launch with RetroArch rather than the stock emulator. In order to do that, uh, select one of the games you want, 
and add this entry to the very end of the command line bit. It has to be this exactly, space dash dash retroarch. You need the space in there or it won't work. Do that with all the games you want, hit the sync button and you're good. If you want, you can even launch the games that come with the console with retroarch by doing the same thing and adding the space dash dash retroarch at the end there. As you can see, the game works great now. You can access the RetroArch menu by pressing both Start and Select at the same time. You might have also spotted these strange Zelda games here. Some of you might recognize that these are the Satellaview games. That was just a bit of an experiment because those games, you know, those aren't actually like real ROMs, right? They're just uh, assembled from whatever uh, data was dumped from those uh, memory cartridge thingies. If you're wondering, Ancient Stone Tablets worked with the Canu emulator, while the other BS Zelda didn't. I'm not sure why uh, I have two different ROMs um, and I don't even know what the differences are anymore, but one of them works after retroarching, if that's a term, and the other just doesn't. Watch the Zelda spin-offs video if you want to see more of those games. Another thing you might have spotted is the fact that you can download other cores in order to play games made for other systems. All I want for a Super Nintendo Classic is to play Super Nintendo games, so I won't install those cores, but if you want to, you can. Just follow the website because there are some extra steps for certain systems, but if you can install the SNES RetroArch core, then you can do the other stuff as well. It's not really all that difficult to do. Also, it's worth mentioning that games for other systems, like the PS1 for example, are quite a bit larger than Super Nintendo games. There is a way to add more storage, and again, I'm going to recommend looking at the snesclassicmods.com website. I might cover some other SNES Classic mods in the future, but for today, I think I'll leave it at that. I hope that was helpful. Going by what I read in the comments, I see that a bunch of you already have modded your NES and SNES classics already. Let me know what you've done with yours, whether you added a few games or went all out with emulators for other systems and stuff like custom borders and graphics. Remember to like the video if you did, subscribe to keep up with all the future videos. Consider helping out the channel by either becoming a member by clicking the join button below or check out the Patreon page in the description. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again in the next video.